Well, a very good evening to you and welcome to another EMTV Rewind. It's the last in the present series. Uh, we will be back, but this is the last one for a while. I hope you're all well and keeping safe and that if you watched the British Youth Championships with us last week, you thoroughly enjoyed them. It was great seeing some bikes back on the track at Armadale and it was great to be back in the tower with John. Tonight, we're going to go back to 2002 and to the Scottish Open. My name is Liam Rudden. Yes, and I'm John McGilvery. There have been several superbly entertaining Scottish Open Championships and the 2002 event was one of the best. There were three former winners in the field. Uh, Andre Compton, the holder, Freddie Short and Peter Carr, who was bidding for his fourth title. Amongst the strong contenders were David Howe and Jesper B. Jensen from Wolverhampton, Glasgow's George Stansel and James Greaves, Simon Stead, Mick Powell, Rusty Harrison and Theo Piper. A night of drama and excitement were ensured. At number one we have Freddie Short. Number two is Kauko Niemannen. Number three, Simon Stead. Peter Carr is at number four. Number five is Adrian Rimmel. David Meldrum is six. Number seven is Teal Piper. At number 8 is Ulrich Ostergaard. Number 9, Andre Compton. George Stansel is at number 10. James Greaves at number 11.
Number 12 is Rusty Harrison. Thirteen, David Howe. Fourteen, Jesper B. Jensen. Kenny Olsen at fifteen. Mick Powell at 16 and in reserve it's Rory Schlein. Let's go racing! So this is the 2002 Scottish Open and there's a lot of tension in the air. Big crowd in the stadium to see who's going to land this year's title. It's a very strong lineup. This is the opening race and there's two former winners in this one. Gate 1, Freddie Short was the 1998 winner in a quite superb meeting. In Gate 2, it's uh, Kaki Niemann, the finish rider with Workington. I think there's some delay on the other side here for some reason. Arms waving. In Gate 3, it's Simon Stead. And in Gate 4, it's going to be Peter Carr. But I don't know what we're waiting for, but... Uh, Oh, it's a rabbit again on the track for the second week. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There we go, that's the hold up. Peter's going to squash it. Well, the rabbit or hare is back in his home, and after a false start, we're away now with heat number one: Freddie Short, Kaki Neiman, and Simon Stead, and Peter Carr, who is the other former winner in this race, of course, having won it three times. 97, 99 and 2000. Injured last year, but uh, helped Henri Compton to win it. We had a bit of a share in last year's championship as well. Here we go, 20 qualifying heats before we reach the semi-final and final. This is heat one. Oh, of a start from the outside there. And he's gone round shot, I think. Shot could come hard off the corner. No, Carr leads the way. Shot's in second, Neiman in third, and young Simon Stead, who's just recently back from injury. He trails at the back at the moment. Simon is struggling to find his best form. That was a good first turn by Carr. He doesn't always like to go around the outside. Tight turns the thing for Peter normally, and that's where he's riding now. And he's pulling away from the Monarchs cap. But they'll both be quite glad to get points on the board. That's quite strong opening race. Stead's trying to make inroads on uh, Neimanen and he's close as they get to the last corner. Carr wins it. Three points in the bag for him. And that's a bit of a blow for Simon Stead there to get no points. He'll have to score heavily in the remaining heats if he's going to get to the latter stages. The home men, though, have started well. The line for heat two, some of the not quite so fancied candidates chance for them to pick up points. Adrian Rummel of Berwick rides from gate one. Home man Theo Piper in his first open, he's in gate two. David Meldrum rides from gate three and the very interesting Danish youngster Ulrich Uli Ostergaard is in gate four. They almost went too soon there. It's Rummel and Meldrum have made the start. Ostergaard gets in amongst them as well though and he's ridden a very nice first corner to get round into second place. Very impressive. Got round the Berwick, Czech, Rummel. He might find that uh, 
David Meldrum does a bit of locking up in front of him. I must say I'm impressed with what I've seen of Ostergaard on the first lap and a half. Leo Piper now moving in to try and challenge. Piper and Rimmel almost tangling up there. And there's certainly some action for the minor places here. Adrian Rimmel not really a track expert, but he is a decent rider on most circuits. Ostergaard hanging on to that second. David Meldrum's pulled clear. We bit hear him scare him from some of the others. R Rimmel has decided uh, this is not his race. And Ostergaard gets a good second place there. Very impressive. No points for Rimmel, but David Meldrum off to a good start. He was a late entrant to the meeting. Team number three is a strong race. George Stansel, Glasgow's top average man, rides from gate one. He's got a very good record here at Armadale. Likewise, the man in gate two, James Greaves. Gate three is Andre Compton, the defending champion. And in gate four, Rusty Harrison of Washington. Stansel's got the rest gate. Compton trying to come round the outside. And Greaves lining up on the inside. And he's gone alongside Compton there. Tight for second, Harrison trying to come around on the outside, but it's Compton who's moved into second, getting clear of Greaves there, and he's going for the outside and cutting down to the line, and Harrison's come round Greaves as well, and Compton goes powering inside Stansel there in a typically aggressive move, and Stansel's moved over. Tremendous effort by Compton there in a very tough race. Harrison's coming blasting after Stansel as well now. Glasgow number one in his sights. And he's going for the big blast. We've seen some exciting overtaking from Harrison this season at Armadale and in other places as well. And here he comes for the last gasp bid. Very tight and he's just short of the finish. Very good effort by Rusty but particularly good ride by Andre Compton to move through from second to take the lead. And he's certainly not going to give up his title without a fight. Super ride. Number four then, the last set of riders, Kenny Olsen, gate one, Jesper B. Jensen on gate two, Mick Powell rides from gate three, and David Howe is in gate four. <laughs> two Wolves men have got away well, Kenny Olsen on the inside, Jensen and Howe jockeying for position there, and Jensen leads with Howe moving strongly into second, finding it difficult to find the room though. Three abreast there as they hit the second lap. Olsen inside Jensen and Howe superbly getting round the outside but lifting at the wrong moment. Jensen leads the way. Here comes Howe again on the outside line. Terrific race. Whoa! Two Wolves men have got clear now of Olsen. But they haven't settled their own finishing order. Jensen's in front but he's not going all that quickly. Howe's got a definite opportunity here and he's gone fast. Tremendous effort by David Howe there. He really persevered on that line. He felt it was going to work. It looked as though it was going to work, and it did work. Tremendous ride by the young man who won the British Under-21 Championship here in 2000. That was a great race. So good work by the two Wolves there, and especially David Howe. Three points to him. Plate number five, David Howe has two on the trot here after a very good win in his opener. He's straight back out, riding from gate number one here. And hot opposition coming from Freddie Short in gate two. We've got Adrian Rummel in gate three. And Andre Compton, a, a very good first ride from him. He rides from gate four. Compton round the outside and shot looking for that line off the inside but he wasn't quick enough and here comes Andre, whoa, Freddy better watch out but he's riding the outside and he's pulled back in front, Andre again, Andre's usual hard drive into the corners wasn't enough to move Freddy over, David Howe's racing clear and really looking like a strong contender here.
Andre nipping at Freddy's heels and you know all about it if he doesn't move pretty quickly. Andre right on the outside line this time. He's still within touching distance of Freddy's shot as he hit the last lap. He's trying to turn down onto the inside but that didn't really work for him. Back on the outside again for Andre. It's no go though, only a point there for the defending champion. Well, that was where the action was during that race as David Howe sped clear and looked very quick and impressive. Freddie Shot was hanging on to that second with Andre all over the back of him. So David Howe's on six already and looking a very powerful contender indeed. Gate number six has Jesper Jensen riding from gate number one. He led his opening race but didn't win it and you could say the same for the man in gate two, George Stansel. Both got two points. Gate three is Kaki Neminen who got a third and the only race winner from the first time out in this one is David Meldrum who rides from gate four. David's got a good start. The outside gate working well. It's Jensen in front from Stansel and oh, Neiman lifts his way through into third just pushing David back there Stansel now trying to get to grips with Jensen Stansel a powerful rider he sees a chance he'll be through and he's getting close with Jensen who didn't look all that quick in his opening race. Stansel's close. He's walking up a bit too much. Final turn, no change of position. Stansel making a last move there. It's not quite good enough. So in the end, no passes in that one, but... Uh, that was quite interesting and Jesper Jensen takes his score to five just one behind his teammate David Howard and George Stansel's on four <laughs> number seven James Greaves rides from gate one he'll be wanting to get off the mark in this one Kenny Olsen in gate two he's here quite far from gate four it's Simon Stead who was a bit disappointing in his first one he's having a good go around the outside here just failing to get around Greaves there Kenny Olsen comes diving back into the action looking for a gap around the outside slightly more tentative than perhaps he would have been if he was fully fit and he's actually under pressure from Theo Piper at that third spot now he's trying hard to get round Olsen and he might do it interesting battle for the minor places he's locking up there and getting some really good drive and Stead's got through this time terrific stuff for the minor placings here Stead in second now I think he'll get the drive off this car Piper nipping away and coming hard under Olsen there. Olsen comes back. What a battle for third. That was a super pass and Olsen very nearly got it back again. So that was a very interesting race. James Greaves was the winner but the eyes were on the minor places and Simon Stead got a good second. That'll help to bring his confidence back. Peter Card on gate one, Uli Ostergaard gate two, gate three is Rusty Harrison and Nick Powell rides from gate four. Carr and Powell the way best, gate four seems to be getting them off the trucks pretty quickly and it's Carr leading the way. Powell's in second and Rusty 
goes by Ostergaard there coming off the second corner. So Peter Carr bidding to join David Howe. Six point mark. Rusty Harrison chasing hard after Mick Powell. Fancies that second spot, I'm sure. And here he comes, hard under Mick there. Harrison gets through. Oh, nice pass by Rusty. We've seen some very good work here. But look at Mick Powell come back there. Great work by the Australian. Super battle for second again here. Once again, Harrison on that cutback line. Who's going to grab second? It's very tight. Mick keeping it fairly wide there. And it's... Still up for grabs as they hit the last corner. Harrison going for the big blast this time. And another cut back. And he's there. Well, that's what he did to Peter Carr earlier in the year. That time he caught Mick Powell and got a super second place after four laps of exciting racing. But the main interest, maybe for the home fans, was the fact that Peter Carr has moved his score onto six points. Eight heats gone. We've had some very good action so far. Heat 9 has David Meldrum riding from the inside gate and Mick Powell in gate 2, 2 on the trot for Mick here. In gate 3, Freddie Schott who's got 4 points so far and gate 4, winner last time out, is James Greaves. That's Meldrum and Greaves round the outside. Greaves has gone ahead. Freddie Schott's got himself stuck at the back. After a mediocre start, he moves inside Mick Powell there. And now he's aiming to come up on David Meldrum. I think he might get inside David here. David out in the dirt though. Graves is clear and he's building up a decent score after a pointless opener. Very short, having to move out a bit to try and catch Meldrum. And he's not making a very convincing job of it so far. David turning in a decent meeting. Struggled last week. Still locking up a bit. He's going to get a second here though, which is probably more than anybody would have predicted. Greaves wins again. And Freddie shot only a point there. And it's not looking as though Freddie is going well enough to repeat his 98 triumph. But James Greaves now well in line for the latter stages with two victories. So, everybody... Well, everybody's completed two rides now. In fact, they had done a couple of races ago and I missed it. So this is heat number 10, the halfway stage in the qualifying. It's Rusty Harrison riding from gate one. We've had plenty of entertainment from him already. Adrian Rimmel, gate two. He's struggling, I'm afraid, again. Kenny Olsen's always in the action, he's in gate 3 and Kaki Nimmanen rides from gate 4 the two Washington men seem to make the best starts there Harrison leads and look at Nimmanen coming impressively round the outside and he's gone alongside Harrison as they hit the pits corner two teammates battling it out and I think Nimmanen's got the better of it Rusty will be annoyed to have lost that lead. But he won't give up there. He's coming blazing back on the outside line again. Look at this from Harrison. He's got this lovely cut back line that we've seen several times. And he's really trying it again. All the way around the outside this time though. Oh, marvellous riding from Harrison. Terrific. And there's a battle going on for third as well as Rimmel and Olsen lock horns. Olsen's hanging on to third. Harrison's got the lead now and he's pulling away from Neiman after a terrific battle up front. It's going to be Rusty. Another super race from him. And Kenny Olsen gets that point. Well, great interest in that race, especially up front, where Harrison and Neiman put on a marvellous battle. And uh, Harrison came out on top and he's some guy. <laughs> Number 11 then, Ulrich Ostergaard rides from gate 1, he's done nicely so far, displayed a good style. Andre Compton's in gate 2, Simon Stead in gate 3 and Jesper B. Jensen in gate 4. Interesting looking heat. Andre's away well from gate 2 and Jensen bidding to go around him and he's done it. 
That's a bold move against Compton. Compton will come tearing back. We've got Ostergaard in third ahead of Simon Stead. And the young Dane. Not sure exactly what age he is, but I think he's a teenager. He's showing a very nice style indeed. Another Dane out in front though, that's Jesper Jensen. And Compton tracking him hard. Two races again here to keep an eye on. Jensen just ahead now. Simon Stead piling on the pressure onto Uli Ostergaard. Here comes Compton up front. He's not far behind. He's maybe spotted the rusty line, but he's going for the big outside one. But it's Jensen hanging on. And, oh, I think Simon Stead might have got third by half a wheel there. Great battle with Uli Ostergaard, who really is turning in a very nice show for such an inexperienced rider. First time in a meeting in the UK. He's practiced here before, but that was a great race once again. And Jesper Jensen is the man who comes out on top. He's well in touch with the leaders. Heat 12 then brings together the two riders who led the field after two races. David Howe on gate one has six points. Peter Carr on gate two has six points. George Stansel is on gate three and he has got four points but is quite capable of winning this heat. And Theo Piper has been in interesting form as well. He's only got two points but he could get in amongst them. Very good looking heat number 12. Jesper Jensen's got eight, he is the leader at the moment. How and Carr might catch him. He's away well, we know what Peter Carr will try and do here. He's come racing off the turn but he hasn't picked up How and he's got Stansel racing hard round the outside of him as well. Carr moved over to difficult for the Tigers man but it's very tight for the first three places Carr moves into that second spot he had to concentrate on getting Stansel out of the way and now he powers off for house tremendous action again Carr really hard into that turn trying to get the drive off the second corner he's not far away How leads from Carr it's helpful leather and Stansel's still there Carr again roaring in on the inside, but Howe's got an advantage now that he's not going to let slip. A big psychological boost for David Howe, he beats Peter Carr, and Howe leads the field with nine points. After three rides, Carr is on eight with Jesper Jensen, and that was a marvellous battle once again with George Stansel right in it as well. Great stuff. Piper riding from gate one, Rusty Harrison in gate two, probably the most exciting rider so far. Jesper B. Jensen is in gate three and Freddie Shot needs a good one from gate four. And Jensen's made the start though but Shot will try a big outside blast and he cuts back and can he catch Jensen here on the bottom bend? He's in hard, Jensen moves right out to the dirt and Shot trying to move him over but he hasn't done it. Jensen keeping his nose in front and keeping himself amongst the main contenders. Rusty's right at the back this time. He's got hard work to do. Right round the outside for Rusty there, but still not picked up third spot. Shot is closing on Jesper Jensen. Harrison really busting a gut to get round Piper. Jensen locking up there and Shot might catch him here. He's going to go hard inside him. He has. Burst through dramatically there on the last corner. And look at Harrison, where's he going? He didn't pick up anything, but a shock result in a way there. Jesper Jensen had looked so good. He made a mistake though on the last lap and Freddie Shot wasn't uh, <laughs> asking for a second chance. He was right through for a super win and putting himself back in contention and knocking a point off Jesper Jensen.
Heat 14 has Kaki Neminen riding on gate 1. Unbeaten David Howe with three wins. He rides from gate 2. Uli Ostergaard in gate 3. And James Greaves. On his last two, he comes from gate 4. Howe away well. Greaves has got himself trapped on the outside. He's made a good corner. Neminen though dives through into second. Greaves right on the outside. Cracking Howe. But for the front three positions and the Danes in there as well turning in another good ride oh Ostergaard's hit the fence that one will probably have to be stopped I think just a wee bit unfortunate there I hope he's okay seems to be just slightly overdid things I tell you because it was a very interesting race developing it looks as though Uli Ostergaard left the track okay, so it's, uh, he's excluded from the rerun. The race stopped very quickly and quite correctly by referee Chris Durno, who's having his first meeting here at Armadale tonight. And we've got a, an interesting rerun to look forward to with Neiman and Howe and Greaves, who were in close contention first time round. a better start this time and he's cut through inside David Howe there oh Howe what a dramatic burst down the straight there there wasn't much room but he's still shot through that gap very impressively Reeves can challenge him hard he knows this track very well David Howe looks really quick though he's certainly matured since he won the under 21 here a couple of years ago now an elite league regular of course and he looks very, very impressive. Certainly the most impressive rider we've seen on show tonight. He's beaten Peter Carr. And he's obviously going to make it to the final unless he has some bad luck. How on the final turn, very quick indeed. Excellent victory. Greaves gets a second. So he benefited from the rerun and he's still in contention for uh, the closing stages. and Mick Powell rides from gate 1, Simon Stead gate 2, George Stanko gate 3 and Adrian Rimmel in gate 4. This man needing points and I think Simon Stead going to the front but Stancil could get past him here, not quite. Stead leads from Stancil. Powell moving inside Rimmel for third spot. Simon will be delighted to have got out in front at last, he's looking more like his old self there. Rimmel in trouble at the back, he's lost a lot of ground. Paul Stancil not going quite as well as he did earlier in the year here. Stead, that is very much the old style, out to the outside in a big locker and powerful drive down the street. He's gradually getting to grips with things again. Young Sheffield man, he's a long way clear. I don't think he'll be a qualifier, but he'll be delighted to get that race win under his belt. Very impressively indeed there. Eight 
16 is the last round of uh, races for this fourth round of races for this set of riders Andre Compton on gate 1 David Meldrum gate 2 Peter Carr gate 3 and Carr very awkwardly placed as they hit the first corner there you'll not be happy about that one Compton's gone ahead he didn't get a great start and he didn't get a bad start so he's caught in between there Carr moves through last set of oh my goodness and Peter will have to be excluded there he was definitely at fault there unfortunately got his passing move wrong and David Meldrum sadly took a very heavy tumble that was most unfortunate bit of a delay and a hospital trip unfortunately for David Meldrum we're back to the line for the rerun of heat 16 Andre Compton, Rory Slyne and uh, Kenny Olsen and it's Compton and Olsen cutting back very nicely there getting into second Compton leads the way he's struggling to hold off Kenny although he's moved in there oh my goodness well, Rory Schlein did well to slip inside Olsen there Compton just closed down a bit on Kenny and the Swede lost it Rory spotted the situation and slipped inside him and he's going to get two points here and he won a conference league riders round at Wimp last night with 15 points so it's exciting times for Rory Schlein Compton getting back, back into the picture though with a win here and a race that originally had Peter Carr in it so that'll help his cause no end and at least we're back with the action again Round of heats and the riders will now be counting up their tallies to see if they're going to make it through to the last couple of races. We've got Freddie Schott going from gate one here, he's on eight points and could do with a win. Next to him, Freddie Schott look-alike, the young Dane Willie Ostergaard. Kenny Olsen out very quickly for his second on the trot. He's got three, as has Ostergaard, and George Stansel coming from gate four has seven. I think it's Schott who's made the best start, although Stansel with him as they head down the back straight. Ostergaard ahead of Olsen in third. Stansel cuts inside Schott. He's in front. Oh, George Stansel's in terrible trouble on the outside there. And he's come a cropper. Hopefully he'll be able to get off. I think he will. There's a car flashing red lights over there. I don't know why. Good battle going on for second here. Olsen making a last gasp bid to try and pass Ostergaard, who moves out of it. But, uh, who's going to get that second? Whoa, that's very close. I think it was Ostergaard. But I got the last close one wrong, so we'll see what the referee says. Freddy Schott moves on to 11. He should be in the semi-finals. Uh, on gate one, he's got nine, and a decent result here would see him through to the latter stages. Kaki Neiman on gate two, he's got five. Theo Piper is on three. And Mick Powell in gate four, he's only scored two. Andre's away well, Theo Piper looking for position there, but it's Neiman in fact who comes off the second turn and gets into second spot. Piper and Powell dueling for the point. Piper trying to find a line to tackle Neiman in. Powell going around the outside and might get past Piper here. Sweeping very wide there. Too wide probably. Andre on his way to taking his score to 12, which will certainly get him at least into the semi-final. Very wide, and this time he has got past Piper, another useful 
tussle there and he consolidates his position there well he hasn't scored many but uh, that's an interesting way to finish and he gets the point Simon Stead on gate one, he scored five. Rusty Harrison in gate two has only scored six, despite it being in the thick of the action. David Howe in gate three is on 12, and he's a point. Head down and charge for David, but it's Simon Stead who got there first, and he's gone ahead of his old rival. Rusty Harrison seems to have hit a problem at the back. Well, Simon Stead, I don't think, will get through to the semi. If he could beat David Howe, Simon is the British Under-21 champion, and he won it in controversial circumstances after David fell at Sheffield. David, on the other hand, no need to pass Simon, so he may just settle for second. He locked up a bit on the first corner. into his last lap, now finding the outside line really suiting him. And Mick Simon really finding his best form in the latter stages of this meeting. A good third for Rory Schlein. Rusty Harrison bows out after giving us plenty of entertainment early on. So a handshake between the old rivals and David probably saying, damn he's beaten me again. Late 20 features three riders who are likely to be involved in the latter stages. Adrian Rimmel's on gate one, he's got no score. Jesper Jensen has 10 going from gate two and he needs, by my reckoning, a second place here to go straight into the final along with his Wolverhampton teammate David Howe. James Greaves rides from gate three, he's on eight. And Peter Carr on gate four is also on eight, having been excluded from his last one. And both of these two need just to score a single point to make sure they make it to the semi-finals. Neither of them can get in the final, so it's reasonably clear cut. The only question is, will Jesper Jensen get a second place here? Peter Carr might have been on the move there, and the race has stopped. The referee not uh, letting him get away with that one. That won't particularly improve his humour, I don't suppose. And we're back for the rerun. Well, back for the rerun. A warning issued, I think, to Peter Carr, who was probably slightly on the move as the tapes rose. Doesn't want to get caught on the outside again, I'm sure that's the case. Not his favourite place to be. Because of the injury to David Meldrum, we're running a bit behind time, so we're trying to get I move on with things, just two races to follow this one, the semi-final and final. The car lifts fairly badly. And everybody queuing up at the first corner there. Look at that from the car, my goodness. That was tight. There can't have been much room on the inside there. Got through into second though. And he's got his dander up, I suspect. Adrian Rimmel's fallen off. Here comes Peter Carr. Almost frightening Jensen out the road there. Absolutely fierce stuff from Carr. God knows how he got through that gap on the first corner because I thought James Reeves is on the inside line. So he's showing he's still a force to be reckoned with. Very much so, Adrian Rimmel better get out the road. He's just touring on the last corner here. The car rides a truly fierce race there to take three points and uh, terrified the other riders out the road, I think. So Peter Carr comfortably qualifies for the semi-final and James Greaves is through as well. Jesper Jensen, I think, has qualified direct for the final. We'll need confirmation of that. So 
this is the semi-final position here quite clear cut the first two go through to the final to join the two Wolverhampton riders who qualified direct Peter Carr rides from gate one here Andre Compton is on gate two gate three is James Greaves and gate four is Freddie Shaw on the inside there and shot coming hard from the outside but it's Compton and Carr who lead the way. Carr very hard again into that bottom turn and has he gone ahead here? I think he has. He was making sure he didn't clip Andre as unfortunately he did with David earlier on. But Peter Carr is really making that inside line work now. He leads the way. Compton's in second. Shot is in third. First two go through. Carr looks a certainty. Can shot pick off Andre Compton, the reigning champion, battling to hold on to his title, with two former winners sandwiching him here. Into the last lap, Carr leads, and Greaves coming inside shot there, and that I think has upset Freddy's attempts to get second, Greaves might move past him here, I think he has. It doesn't make any difference to the finalists, it's Carr and Compton who go through. Greaves took third, but he goes out, as does Freddie Schott. Carr and Compton join Jensen and Howe, and Peter Carr really does seem to have got that inside line going. Well, let me just jump in here to remind you that the brand new 2020-21 um, merchandise is now available from the club shop. There's a whole uh, clothing range. Shop is, of course, online, so if you head over to the official club website, you'll find everything you need to know there. Also, uh, What The Fork, our team sponsors for 2020, 2021 and now 2022, have launched their new app for ordering food for delivery. Download the app from the App Store or from the Google Play Store uh, and be sure to give them a try when you're ordering your next takeaway. John. Yeah, thanks Liam, and a reminder that you can watch round four of the British Youth Championships. They took place at Armadale uh, last Saturday. Uh, you can watch the match on demand on the official website now for just £5. And as EMTV Rewind comes to a season finale, as does our Sunday lunches, we will be hosting the last one in this current series with Kevin Little. Kevin will be joining us from 12 o'clock on Sunday. Get all your questions for Kevin to John and Liam at Edinburgh Mall co.uk and we look forward to an entertaining chat with Kevin Little. So for the last time this year as always stay safe and enjoy the final of the 2002 Scottish Open Championship. So this is the winner takes all final. First man home in this race is the Scottish Open champion for 2002. It's David Howe riding from gate one. Top scorer in the qualifiers. Gate two yes for Jensen. The other direct to the final man. Gate three is Peter Carr, three times winner. Won his last race very impressively and the semi. And Andre Compton, the holder of the title, rides from gate four. Who's it going to be? And that one stopped again and Carr is not going to be happy with that. He is not going to be happy with that. There didn't seem to be an awful lot wrong with that start to me. Well, here we go again. Peter Carr's not a happy man. Certainly there wasn't much in it that time. He jetted away just as the tapes rose. It's always a tough one to call. And the rule isn't entirely clear anyway. However, here we go second shot at the final. Let's hope for a nice clean start. Now and Jensen have got the best start from the inside. Carr cuts through and it's Jensen just ahead of Carr to the third corner. Jensen leads. Can Carr get past him here? Yes he can. What a pass by Peter Carr off the fourth corner. Oh, he locks up there and almost came down. But he's pulled clear. The other three are in a pack behind him. Car is clear. It's Jensen's turn. Compton and Howe battling for that third spot. 
car's almost spinning round backwards. Compton squeezed inside Howe and Howe's trying desperately to get into third. Compton sweeps the car. Car's into his last lap and he's a mile clear. If nothing goes wrong for him, he's won his fourth title. He's done it. A wheelie from Peter Carr. He's won again and Andre Compton finished on the deck. I'm not sure quite how he got there because I was watching Peter Carr. The rider in yellow is excluded, that's Andre. Well, his lights come on anyway, I don't know why they bothered with that. But Peter Carr's the winner of what has been a quite sensational Scottish Open Championship. The fireworks go off and a magnificent Peter Carr wins his fourth title. Peter, you must be absolutely delighted at the moment. Uh, yeah, I really wanted it. Nobody knows that. I've had three really hard days in the gym because I haven't been able to go for a couple of weeks. I was feeling a bit tired. I've trained hard. Neil Levitz did the engine tonight. Uh, we only got it Wednesday. Halted a lot of things on the short stroke. Messed about with it. Got it going quite well. So I, I wanted that. It was just game to me of it at the end. Simply the best players on the stadium there. You obviously are simply the best on this track. Is I think that's what wins you at so many times. Is just you're, you're brilliant around Armadale. Uh, yeah, I know where I'm going and that. I've had a few bad meetings, but I was trying hard tonight. Yeah. Obviously, it's four times now you've surpassed great Jack Young's record. Um, you must be delighted with that as well. The most winners ever in, in the Edinburgh Scottish Open. Yeah, Jack Young. I mean, he's been a good rider at Edinburgh and everything. So it was good to get four wins. Definitely. I mean. It's just great, really. Yeah, and obviously, the fans, you want it for them as well. The scenes in the crowd were crazy. I don't know if you noticed that when your victory lap. I did. Everybody was behind me. I, when I made the start in the first one, I rolled back round. I could hear everybody cheering. I was thinking, I want to win it. I do.
Obviously the sponsorship's important here and we're going to welcome in Graham Mabin, the Mont um, Performance Factory sponsor. He's got a presentation to make as well. Thank you very much. How are you? Superb performance you once again. Thanks for all we the support. We have a new champion. Keep on. Yeah. What's in store for Peter Carr for the rest of the season now then? Uh, now the short stroke's going a bit, hopefully just to keep it together and ride it a bit and see how it goes from there. Yeah, on behalf of all the Monarchs fans, thanks for tonight again Peter. Very best for the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Got Graham Mabin, performing factory owner. Um, Graham, you should be very happy with tonight. It went brilliant. Absolutely superb. The, the field put together was tremendous. The riding was tremendous, and we can't ask for anything more. We hope this will grow from strength to strength. I mean, for a man to win it four times just shows you what the calibre of Peter is. And we, as a home track rider, which made it even more important. But we hope that from now on this will grow strength to strength and we'll get better riders and more important for the fans. They deserve value for money and they've got it tonight without a shadow. Obviously um, you've had a long a long history supporting the sport and uh, involved in Cycle Speedway and Speedway regularly over the last few years. It must be pleasing as a supporter to see the company developing along with the Speedway here at Armadale. Yes, I think there's a long way to go. I think the directors are moving in the right direction. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got to try and put this sport back on the map. Sky's doing a lot for us in television rights, but the individual clubs have got to make their own mark. I think we've got to now seriously look at getting a team, go out in the park and really start paying the supporters back. We've got a loyal fan base here, we know that. And every year we travel and we've got the same. By the end of the day, we want to win. I don't think anybody disagrees with that, Stephen. I think, personally, me, I don't disagree with that. That's why I took a three-year deal with these guys and I'm delighted. First year's been disappointment, but what's say? Second and third, let's go for it. And obviously you're up there in the hospitality suite tonight with Linda and your... your um independent so to speak in the final but you must be wanting the performance factory race jacket Peter Carr to go over the line first there egging him on of course you must do I mean at the end of the day that's what it's all about you know I've got clients here tonight who've never seen Speedway in their life before I can guarantee you're going to get out of the 20 clients we've got here tonight you're going to get five or ten going to come back they've seen Speedway for the first time they enjoy it but me personally of course I want the performance factory that's why I sponsored them I want it to do well and I want the team to do well and I'm hoping that within the next couple of years we're going to lift silverware, we're going to be the league champions, whatever. I'll be there and I'll try my best to help these directors and the fans move this forward. Well, as when the one and only comes on Peter Carr's song, we thank the one and only Fulfillment Factory again for their sponsorship and hopefully the next couple of years will be more successful. Thanks, Gil. Well, we hope so, but then let Peter in the rest ride because we are doing well and let's go forward from there. Thank you very much.